Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to the series on abnormal pupillary reactions. Today we are discussing adiatonic pupil. Without any delay, let's get started. The adiatonic pupil is essentially a problem in the parasympathetic nervous supply of the pupil. Therefore, the light reflex in the adiatonic pupil is either absent or the pupil will react very sluggishly to light. However, the near reflex is preserved, it is present and usually it is a tonic reaction of the pupil. What I mean to say is normally the pupil will react briskly and quickly to the light and also in the near reflex pathway. However, in case of adiatonic pupil, the reaction is slow and tonic. Therefore, it is called adiatonic pupil. Adi is behind the name of the scientist who actually discovered it. In certain cases, the adiatonic pupil will be associated with the decreased deep tendon reflexes. Such an adiatonic pupil is also called a systemic adiatonic pupil or it is also called the holmes adi syndrome. Okay, so in holmes adi syndrome, not just we have the adiatonic pupil, but along with that we will have decreased deep tendon reflexes. In my video on the nerve supply of the pupil, specifically the parasympathetic nerve supply of the pupil, I already explained to you how the sphincter pupillae, which is the final uh, muscle responsible for meiosis or pupillary constriction in response to the light reflex and to the near reflex gets its nerve supply. So let us revise the same. We know that from the optical tract, few of the fibers, the pupillary fibers will come to the pretectal nucleus and after reaching the pretectal nucleus, they will go via the internuncial neurons to both the edinger vespal nucleus. From the edinger vespal nucleus, they will travel within the third nerve and enter the cavernous sinus. Near the cavernous sinus, the third nerve will divide into a superior division and the inferior division. The pupillary fibers will pass across the along the inferior division of the third nerve. Now the third nerve inferior division will give, give its nerve supply to the medial rectus, to the inferior oblique and to the inferior rectus. The pupillary fibers however will pass along the division for the inferior oblique and then go and relay in the ciliary ganglion. After relaying in the ciliary ganglion, the postganglionic fibers will pass through the short root of the ciliary ganglion and then they are going to enter the sclera near the optic nerve as the short ciliary nerves. Now there are 8 to 10 short ciliary nerves which will divide further into about 20 branches of short ciliary nerve out of which Almost 90% will go and supply the ciliary muscle present in the ciliary body which is responsible for accommodation and also for our near reflex. However, only about 5% will go and supply the sphincter pupillae muscle which is associated with the light reflex pathway. Now this basic information is very important to understand what causes our adiatonic pupil. In adiatonic pupil, it is basically the damage to the parasympathetic ciliary ganglion. What I mean to say is that the damage is present here at the level of the ciliary ganglion. Damage to the parasympathetic ciliary ganglion will lead to the adiatonic pupil. So let us see how. I already told you that most of the fibers are coming from the ciliary ganglion and they are supplying the ciliary muscle. Only 5% will go and supply the sphincter pupillae. Once there is a damage to the ciliary ganglion, this nerve supply to these muscles will be affected. So in response to the damage, there is a process which uh, happens and that is called the denervation hypersensitivity or supersensitivity. What happens is that the receptors which are present in the sphincter pupillae and the ciliary muscles will actually increase in size, okay, increase in their number. So this is called the upregulation of the postsynaptic receptors to allow re -innervation. So what happens is the muscles will realize that the nerves, they are not getting adequate nerve supply. So they are going to come with more number of receptors in order to get the same amount of nerve supply. Now in response to those denervation hypersensitivity, now the nerves will start regenerating from the uh, postganglionic fibers. 
The process of re-innervation, however, is not so accurate. That means the fibers which were intended to go to the ciliary muscle, they will now start going towards the sphincter pupillae. That means this re-innervation is not accurate, it is not normal, it is abnormal and therefore it is called aberrant innervation or aberrant regeneration. As a result of which the patient will actually have the near light dissociation or light near dissociation or tonic meiosis. So what happens in this is that whenever there is near reflex starting, okay, whenever the person looks at the near reflex, the fibers for the ciliary muscles will be stimulated and because most of the fibers now have aberrantly regenerated to go to the sphincter pupillae also, the pupil will instead contract or constrict giving like giving rise to a tonic meiosis on the near reflex along with accommodation so because the accommodative fibers have now derooted and gone towards the sphincter pupillae muscle near reflex is actually preserved in aditonic pupil however this near reflex is tonic rear reflex and sphincter constriction is occurring in response to the near uh, near stimulation as compared to the light stimulation and that is the reason why we have light near dissociation in aditonic pupil. Now let us see how to test and diagnose the aditonic pupil. Now the aditonic pupil is most of the time will be actually little bit larger compared to the other normal pupil. Because of that the patient will have anisocoria. Anisocoria is nothing but it is an abnormal difference between the size of two pupils. That means one pupil will be smaller, one pupil will be larger and usually the aditonic pupil is actually larger. Okay, and this point helps us to differentiate it from the Argyle Robertson pupil. Okay, because Argyle Robertson pupil also has light near dissociation. However, the Argyle Robertson pupil will be smaller. Okay, but the aditonic pupil is larger compared to the normal pupil. Secondly, whenever there's an isochoria, we have to check whether the anisocoria gets better or worse in light and dark. So when we do that test, we find out that the aditonic pupil actually gets worsened in the presence of light and this indicates that there is a problem in the parasympathetic nerve supply. Okay, next after you have uh, checked the pupillary reaction, that means you have checked that there is an isochoria present and the anisochoria is getting worsened in light. The third thing is we will see, it, see the pupil under slit lamp and we might find a sectoral palsy. Okay, only one sector of the pupil will actually be reacting and the other sector will not be reacting. That indicates that there is a sectoral palsy. Okay. Third is vermiform movements of the pupillary margin also can be seen. So vermiform is nothing but worm-like. Now what is the reason that we see sectoral palsy or vermiform movements in case of the tonic pupil? The answer is very simple. As I already told you that whatever supply the sphincter pupillae is getting in aritonic pupil is coming from the aberrant regeneration of the fibers which was supposed to go to the ciliary muscle right now these fibers might not come all around equally when something is abnormal it will not follow all the rules so what happens in aritonic pupil also only a part of the uh, pupil might actually get its nerve, its nerve supply back and the other part might not be getting its nerve supply back. So that part of the pupil which has not received that those aberrant regeneration generated fibers will show sectoral palsy and the parts which have received also might not react in a normal fashion and therefore we will see a vermiform movement of the pupillary margin. Now, as I already explained to you that the light near dissociation will be present in aditonic pupil. However, the near reflex will be tonic near reflex. So how do we test for super sensitivity? I already told you that there is a concept of super sensitivity, denervation super sensitivity present in aditonic pupil. And why is it so? Because 
there is denervation per post ciliary ganglion damage and the number of receptors which are present on our iris they are actually increasing as the number of receptors will increase the sensitivity to react to a particular stimulus will also increase and what is the stimulus over here the stimulus is acetylcholine okay so as we know that the parasympathetic system actually responds to acetylcholine so a similar drug we use for testing of aditonic pupil for testing the super sensitivity which is present in aditonic pupil okay and that drug is diluted pilocarpin right pilocarpin acts in a very similar fashion to acetylcholine and uh, we do not use the commercially available one percent pilocarpin to which almost everyone every pupil normal pupil also will react what we want to do in this testing is that we have to dilute this pilocarpin from one person we have to make it about 0.125 percent that means we are adding saline to it and we are making it really really weaker pilocarpin and very diluted pilocarpin so when we pour this diluted pilocarpin when we put this diluted pilocarpin in a patient who has aditonic pupil we are going to observe after 30 to 60 minutes that the dilated pupil of the patient will now constrict in response to this 0.125 percent of pilocarpin and since normal eyes will not react to this pilocarpin only the eye which has super sensitivity will be able to react to this weaker diluted pilocarpin we will be able to diagnose that okay fine this eye actually might be having aditonic pupil because it is reacting to a weaker pilocarpin How do we treat a patient who is suffering from aditonic pupil or the conditions which actually cause aditonic pupil? These patients will usually present with symptoms like photophobia and difficulty in vision. They will usually have blurry vision both for near and far because they usually have unequal size of pupil and these unequal sizes of pupil would actually lead to this uh, problems in the vision. So usually the treatment is not required and reassurance uh, uh, can help in many patients as it's a benign condition and gradually the aberrant regeneration will take place. So the first thing which recovers is the accommodation. So but however this also takes about months to years to actually uh, resolve. However, there will be few patients who are going to have problem with the vision and also they will have severe photophobia. So in those people, we can give them dilute pilocarpin. However, discrimination is actually needed in many patients because this pilocarpin, it acts as acetylcholine, as I already told you. Moreover, they are very sensitive to this acetylcholine because of the super sensitivity present in aritonic pupil. So most of them will develop symptoms because of ciliary spasm. Okay, so they will have headache and bro ache because of this treatment with pilocarpin. So not all patients would be prescribed actually pilocarpin. Now some patients in which the accommodative paresis does not resolve even after months to years, they can be given actually bifocals to deal with the blurry vision at near. So that's all about aritonic pupil. I hope it was useful. Thank you and have a nice day.